Hey guys, welcome back to a new video tutorial. Today we're going to be talking about another pen testing tool known as Wireshark. It is the extremely popular, extremely powerful, and very versatile um, networking analyzing tool. And I'm going to be showing you how to use it today. I'm going to be showing you the basics. We're going to be capturing some data. We're going to be understanding what that data means um, and, you know, stuff in and around that kind of area. But first of all, a little history lesson about Wireshark. So, Wireshark came in 1997. It was developed by a guy called Gerald Combs who needed a tool for tracking down network problems and wanted to learn more about networking. So, he started writing Ethereal, which is what Wireshark used to be called before it came uh, before it ran into copyright issues. Um, it went through a lot of development from then and in 2006 it changed name to Wireshark and then in 2008 uh, Wireshark version 1.0 was released. Um, this was the first version that was deemed as complete with the minimum features implemented and then in 2015 Wireshark 2.0 was released which featured the new interface. So Wireshark is available on Kali Linux, it's available on, well, Linux, um, it comes pre-installed on Kali and a bunch of other operating systems as well, um, but it's also available on Windows and it's also available on Mac if you are using one. Um, but as I said, Wireshark is available on uh, Kali Linux pre-installed, if you click on your applications it is there, um, if not you can go ahead and type it in as well. Uh, there is two versions. There is another one as well that is lowercase Wireshark. I'm not too sure what the difference is. The logos are different as well. Um, however, I haven't seen any differences between them. So if you know why, go ahead and leave it in the comments. So when you open up Wireshark for the first time or any other t or any time, uh, if you are using root as your or a super user, you will get this Lua error, which is fine. Just click OK to it. But this is what your home page looks like. So it will say, Welcome to Wireshark. And you will have the option to open capture files should you have any that you have saved or used recently. So you can see I've got a bunch there just to populate that uh, that list for you. Uh, further down, you also have capture um, as well as the uh, capture filter, which we'll talk about as well. We also have our interfaces here, which give you a live view of the traffic that is on them as well as the address of that and the physical address of that particular interface. Um, so before we do anything, I just want to explain how Wireshark works, or rather what it's actually doing. So your network card in your PC or laptop or phone or whatever um, is constantly sending and receiving data. Um, well, not constantly, it depends on what operating system you are running, <coughs> Windows 10. Um, but it basically is constantly sending and receiving data and what Wireshark does is gather all of that data and put it into a table um, that is easily readable and you can manipulate it and work with it and stuff like that. So that is what Wireshark is actually doing. It's just grabbing all that data and displaying it to you in a nice and easy way. So the idea behind these two live views here is you can see um, what adapter is actually live. So you can see Eve Zero is live for me. So you can start a capture in two ways. You can go ahead and click on your interface that you want to use and click on the blue button up here that says start capturing packets. Um, or you can just double click which also works. And then once you double click that capture will be started. Now if you are on Windows 10 this list would instantly be populated with stuff uh, coming in and flowing and going in and out, going to Microsoft servers and stuff like that. Uh, as we are on Linux, it doesn't really happen very quickly. Um, so what we're going to have to do is browse around on the internet a little bit. So we're on sample captures here, but we'll go back to that. So we'll click up on here. We'll click around and we'll click some links and we've ended up on a license. Um, but yeah, what we're going to do now is go back to Wireshark. And you can see that we have some data, so we can go ahead and actually read this data. So I'm going to stop the capture up here. We've got four buttons up here. So we've got start, stop, restart, and also, uh, also capture options, which we'll run through. Um, but this is what your main interface looks like in Wireshark when you are capturing data. You have, this is where your output is. This is where all the data comes into and flows into. Um, this is what your actual packet looks like. So if you don't know, when you send something over the internet, it is sent in packets. If you say have a one gig file, that is split up into multiple packets and they are numbered. Um, they do not arrive at the destination in the same order that they were sent in most of the time. Um, so that's why they are numbered so they can be reassembled at the other end. Uh, but this is what your packet looks like. If you can see that that is changing as we click on the different packets. Um, and this is what 
uh, each of these, um, I can't remember what they're called, they might be headers or something along them lines, but that's what each of those contain here in hex. Um, so obviously when you are sending data it is going to be in hex which is 0 to 9 and A to F I want to say. You might have to correct me on that. Um, but yeah that's what that is. And in the table here we have number which is the packet number so you can see this is the first packet so packet 1, 2, 3, 4 and 5 and you can see here that these little arrows have appeared. This is basically it's telling me that 1 to 11 we're all part of the same kind of packet. Actually, is it? Um, it could be. <laughs> I'm not too sure if I'm honest. You can see that he's kind of segmenting it though. We also have time, which is what time, how long the tool had been capturing for before that packet was detected. It's not the system time. So you can see after three seconds, this is the packet that was captured. We also have the source IP, which is where it came from. So we've got 192.168.110.184. That is Kali Linux and also the destination as to where it's going um, and you can see that it's reading in and out there because our destination is us and those IP addresses match. We also have the protocol here so TCP, uh, TLS, DNS, uh, have we got any more in here we should have maybe ARP, have we got ARP? Uh, we don't have any ARPs but yeah so those are your protocols you can have as well you also have the length which is in bytes of how big that packet is and also some additional information about that particular packet. Now one of the most important features of Wireshark which makes it easier to find what you are looking for is the filter. So say you want to only see TCP uh, data, you just type in TCP and you hit enter and this is all your TCP data. And with TCP data you can actually follow it so you can right click on any of these packets and go uh, to follow and do TCP stream and what that's going to do is it will bring together all the packets that are associated with that particular TCP stream now we can't read it because it's all TLS 1.2 you know secure socket layer and all that kind of jazz um, but you can see here that it's changed the filter to TCP dot stream um, equals zero it might be it might not be equals I guessed um, but you can see that these are all the packets that are to do with that particular stream so that's a very powerful feature of Wireshark and that is where the other bit came in earlier. Um, if I just go ahead and close Wireshark I can show you what I mean. So I'll just go ahead and open it back up again. So you can also apply filters from the very start. So say we only want to capture HTTP. Um, that might not work actually. Yeah, let's choose TCP port HTTP. Actually I don't know why that's not going green. Let's just choose anything if it's got anything. Greater, <laughs> but yeah, I don't know any. I don't tend to use it from here, um, but you can filter it from there so that it kind of doesn't display any packets that are um, not part of there. So part eight, for example. So if we open up Eve zero, and did that apply the filter? Part eight, there we go. So now we're not going to get any information because it's saying capturing from Eve zero on part eight. So if we browse around on the internet a bit we should get packets. No, apparently we didn't. So it must only be information that is leaving on our web server if we were having one. But yeah, you can apply filters from the very um, start of your capture. So let's go ahead and run a capture again so I can go back through some of the options. So, if I'm just going to stop the capture here, we'll go through the capture options. So capture options is a very interesting place to be. I don't know why I said interesting. Um, but in here you have your interfaces, uh, if zero, and if you click this arrow down here, you've got the address as well, so 192.168.110.184, and also the physical address of that um, network adapter. You also have the link layer header, so Ethernet, and some other settings as well, which I'm not too uh, familiar with. You also have the uh, filter if you are using one. Um, if you go on output, you can make it so it always captures to a file. By default, Wireshark just captures into basically memory and it doesn't save anything automatically. However, you can choose it to save stuff automatically into a file if you want it to. But if you leave it blank, it's just going to be a temporary file. You can also choose what output format to use, so pcap-ng or pcap. Um, or you can create a new file automatically after so many kilobytes, megabytes and gigabytes. Or... Uh, after seconds, minutes and hours. So this is kind of handy as well. It stops your catch files from getting too big. Uh, say you want to only have a 5 meg limit, you can make it have multiple 5 gig files instead of one big 
um, 25 meg file for example. Uh, you can also have it so it stops after so long or rather splits files depending on how long that scan's been running. So say you wanted to capture a work day, you could go ahead and tick this box here, put in 8, 8 hours and that's going to result in 8 files each ranging from an hour. So if you want to see what happens in particular chunks of the day, you can split it up like that which is kind of cool, helps you with finding problems and stuff like that. Uh, on the options here, we also have display options, so update list of packets in real time, automatically scroll during a live capture, show extra capture information and dialogue, uh, we have name resolution as well, so resolve MAC address, resolve network names and resolve transport names. And you can also make it so that Wireshack will stop capturing after so many packets or so many files or so many kilobytes or so many seconds. So those are all configurable options you can have um, in here as well. But you can't run create a new file automatically and also this feature as well, you have to have one or the other. Okay, so what we're going to do is say you want to have you you know you want to have a go with Wireshark, but you want to see something. You don't want to just be capturing data and kind of staring blankly. You want to see something interesting. So Wireshark have developed the sample captures wiki, which basically lets you download capture files um, and kind of look through them and stuff. So you can save and open capture files. Um, so I've already pre-downloaded some, but this all has specific information that you can look at. Uh, so if we scroll up to the top here, we have browser elections, SMBD locking, uh, SMB3 encryption, SMB3.1 handshakes, uh, Telnet, HTTP, and stuff like that. And if you click on them, you can go ahead and download the sample catch files, which also have a sim, you know, a description of what it is. So I've already pre-downloaded some for you guys, so we can have a look through them. So we'll open up the captures folder here. I've got HTTP. Uh, RSS snake oil, telnet and voice over IP. So you are actually able to capture voice over IP uh, packets and basically listen to them which I think is just proper CIA or FBI or whatever. It's proper hacker. <laughs> um, is you know being able to intercept a voice call over voice over IP. Um, so this is a HTTP um, everything's in plain view. It's not HTTPS. This is just HTTP and if we just filter this uh, log file here with HTTP and click on follow TCP stream. You can see that we get the full page because obviously as we are browsing around the internet these packets contain the pages. So we have the full actual real you know we can go ahead and recreate this web page but you can see um, the actual page that was loaded and you know stuff like that so we can go ahead and close that and we can open up this one for example and it all has nice little information in for us. Maybe not that one because it's not a T it's not HTTP protocol. Um you can see it's all got um the head the oh what is that packet called? I can't remember what it's called, the header information and stuff like that. Um so that's kinda cool as well. So you can see the you know the whole web page using the follow TCP stream function. Uh, so that's what HTTP looks like. You can see that this website actually had ad blocker on it, which is kind of funny, and also ads and stuff like that. Uh, if we take a look at, another look at RSS Snake Oil, I can't remember which one this is. I think this might be, yeah, this is an example of HTTPS. So obviously we can't read this. Um, so if this is why I downloaded it, is to demonstrate that this is all scrambled information. We can't read it. We don't know what it means. So the problem with HTTP, obviously, is that it's unencrypted. Now with Wireshark, you can actually have um, a real world view of why it's important that your information is encrypted. So if we just take a HTTP capture, for example, if I log into a website on HTTP, we can see exactly what was sent over that network. We can see everything in plain text. So even if your password is stored in the database encrypted, you sent it to the web server unencrypted. So we can read that very easily. And that goes for um, credit cards and everything, debit cards, PayPal's, PayPal passwords, everything. So if you're using HTTP, you are in a bad place. If you use HTTP in a public space on public Wi-Fi, you're in a very, very, very bad place. So that's why we always look for the padlock and all that kind of bullshit. Um, we just always make sure that we use HTTPS for that reason, because someone can just sit here with Wireshark and go ahead, follow the TCP stream and get your information that's all in plain text, and it's just too easy. Um, so that's an example of an RSA, SSL um, connection going on. You can't read anything. Uh, so this one is a Telnet one, so this is what I'm going to show you in live. Uh, but this is essentially a conversation going on between two computers. So if we view the TCP stream, you can see that essentially what it is is before SSH, which was secure, um, secure, I can't remember what it is, 
what SSH stands for, but obviously one of the S stands for secure. SSH replaced Telnet because Telnet is unencrypted. So you can see here that the user logs in with a username fake, password was user, and the last login and everything like that. And then it pings Yahoo, lists, um, lists some folders, doesn't get anything, lists some hidden folders and gets a couple of hits and then exits. If that was in SSH, that wouldn't have been able to, you wouldn't be able to see that. And I'm going to show you this in a live demonstration in a minute. And the last one we've got is the voice over IP, which is a bit different. So this is what a voice over IP looks like. You can see H.245. Uh, um, obviously, that is what the protocol is that the voice over IP is communicating on. But you go up to telephone, eh? voice over IP calls, and you can see that we have um, it's detected a, um, a voice call. And we can go ahead and click on uh, play streams and go ahead and click... Uh, where's play? Play's on here somewhere. I can't find play. There it is. Click play. And I was I don't know what they're saying, but that's an actual conversation going on. And you can see blue and this kind of greyish colour that separates the two um, different talkers, the two different speakers. So that's kind of cool as well. That doesn't work for Skype, but it will work for some voice over IP services, and that's how you can intercept voice calls over the internet. So let's go ahead and I will show you guys a real demonstration of Wireshark in the open. So I have open here my Ubuntu server and if you learned from last video which was Netcat, the one before the previous video, um, we're going to start a Netcat server here so nc-ml on 1337. We'll put verbose mode on. And then we're going to go ahead and connect to that service netcat dash nv um, 192.168.110.186 I believe that one is nah that might not be it can't remember what the IP address is if config 185 is 185 so we'll just start that server again and we'll go connect on 185 Okay, so we're connected, and I'm going to just go ahead on to our Wireshark here, open up ETH0 here, and I'm just going to type some random garbage. So, Jack, tutorials was here. Don't forget to subscribe. And you can see as I send every message that more information populates into Wireshark. So, just take account there one, two, three, four, four packets. If I just come back here and just go, yo, yo, I will subscribe and also like, take the hint, we should have 8 packets, so 1, 2, 3, 4, 5, 6, 7, 8, so there we go, responses and everything. Let's go ahead and stop that capture, and we're going to go ahead and follow the TCP stream, and what do you know? Jack Tutorials was here, don't forget to subscribe, yo yo I will subscribe and also like. Now obviously if that's in SSH, we're not going to see any of that. So let's just see, we'll start SSH on this, so service that and we'll log in there we go and I'm going to SSH as Jack at 192.168.110.185 and yes and we just need to start capture uh, continue without saving and we're just going to log in so you can see we're getting information here I just need to type the password in properly <coughs> There we go, so we're going to do ls and ls-a and we're going to nano out a file and we're going to type a bunch of information in there and save it and then we're going to exit. You can see here that it says encrypted packet, so if we just go ahead and follow TCP stream you can see that that means absolutely nothing to us, we can't read it, it's not in plain text. So that is why people use SSH for exactly the same reason that HTTPS should be used because you can't intercept it, it doesn't make any sense, we don't know what it means. Um, and that kind of brings it to the end of this video, I hope you guys enjoyed it. Um, if you did, go ahead and hit that like button and feel free to check out some of the links in the description. I've got the resources there for you guys to play with, so some of the samples that you can have a look with. Um, but that's Wireshark, definitely recommend using it. Obviously I've only covered a smidge of what is available in Wireshark, there's so much stuff that you can use and it really will help you. Um, in network analyzing and stuff like that. 
But that's it for this video. I hope you guys enjoyed it. Go ahead and hit that like button if you did. Share it with anyone who will also enjoy it. And if you aren't already subscribed, get subscribed and plus that little bell icon as well. You should have seen it popping up during the video for you to hit it because the subscription box uh, subscription box does not work. Um, after this video, I'm going to be making a little change to the schedule. I'm going to be start bringing in more videos again as I'm getting with the flow. Um, so tutorials are going to be uploaded on Wednesday and on Friday. Um, on a, on Saturday, I'm going to upload uh, a new series where we just kind of go through the news of the week and talk about, uh, well, insecurity and hacking and any kind of technology news. Stuff that I find interesting, I'm going to cover it just because um, that's easy content and it's frequent uploads and that means YouTube will start to like me again um, and not start killing my channel. So hopefully you guys will enjoy that um, and hopefully I'll be bringing back Explained as well. Um, and I've got loads of ideas coming on. I've got lots of companies sending me some really great stuff as well to do with hacking and security so I can showcase those for you guys. Um, but until next time guys, I shall see you again in the next one. So the next video is going to be on Wednesday, which is going to be a tutorial. And then after that, there's going to be a news uh, series um, where I'll cover the news. And that's going to be on every Saturday. Um, I'll try my hardest to get them out. So like I said guys, thanks for watching. I'll see you again in the next one. Don't forget to follow me on Twitter. That is Jack1337. And also don't forget to like me on Facebook. That is Jack Tutorials. And like I said guys, until next time, I shall see you again in the next one.